Someone's day of reckoning has come. <laughs> Joining us now on the Harbor One hotline is our friend Lou Merloni. Oh, hola. Uh, also known in New York from the great Bob Shepard as Louis Merloni. Yes. Or as Christian Fourier has called you, <laughs> Corporate <laughs> Lou Merloni. Corporate Lou? <laughs> yep. Fight away. Uh, What's up with the corporate Well, loop? hold on, Lou. So you heard that glorious open, right? You yeah. heard that glorious open of, uh, and then, you know, then you, we kind of pair that up with uh, with you walking through the airport and, yeah. you know, and, and just, I just, you know, we've had so many, we've had seeing is believing, Lou. We've, ha we've had passive aggressive, Lou. We've even had Merloni investments. But I'm here to tell you, angry Lou is dead. He is oh, dead. My he is God. gone. And the next best oh, available man. option, Lou, until I'm proven wrong, is corporate Lou. I didn't want to do it. Well, because I, I be, well, the, Christian, the team's five and two. Like, I what do you want you, me to do? I Go through you, the airport and talk about how disappointing it has been and just start shredding everybody? Well, that's, I mean, that was basically the, the narrative going into the series. So I thought you still, I thought you would look at that Oakland series and, you know, and even like, even Seattle series, like the, Seattle's an outlier. Oakland is Oakland. You know, like, don't, don't get your hopes up. They still suck. No, that's, that's for you guys. <laughs> that's what I mean. Um, no, but no, here, here's the, and I, and I understand that. Yeah, the hopes weren't great, but. And I've said before that they have a lot of talent in this team. And unfortunately, people are taking it out on the players, the manager, the coaches. You want to take it out on ownership and management for not giving them enough. Maybe they're hot start. Maybe if they get off to a good start, you'd be even more furious at ownership for not believing in this team because they actually could be good. But while they're 5-2, and two, yeah, they swept Oakland. That's a team they lost two out of three out in Oakland. The same team. Like, they got Anaheim right now. They got swept last year out in Anaheim. They They sucked against some of the worst teams in baseball last year because they couldn't catch it. So the fact that they just walked out of the Coliseum with three wins is like, that's a good thing. Like, I'm not going to shred them just because my expectations were 83, 84 wins. They're probably still going to get there because the inevitable will happen. And they didn't believe in this team enough to give them the depth to withstand the inevitable. So maybe their hot start, if they were a really good team and guys do perform, would just anger people more. But it shouldn't be to the players – who are sort of trying to prove that they're worth something. It should be to the ownership management who didn't believe in them enough to give them more. See, there's a little edge in your voice now. See, it came back. No, you no, 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 no. You. Hold it's on. Still in you. Thank yeah, you. No, no. Oh, See, so wait nervous. a minute. You're deflecting. Ooh, I'm so nervous. You're deflecting. The no, edge. No. The edge. edge. No, the edge came back in Lou's voice because <laughs> you poked the bear because, for listen, no reason. I'm Keep just poking glad the bear. I like the edge. There. <laughs> I thought it was gone. I thought, Will, see, your problem is you hang out with Will too much. Oh, well, you know, he's, yeah, he's sunshine he's and roses, sunshine but that's roses fine. You need some of it. Yeah, that, Will's got nothing to do with it. By the way, he's pretty negative, they... too, behind the scenes. I mean, uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, man. Uh, Lou, what surprised you about this team in the first week, if anything? This the rotation. Um, you know, the way they threw the baseball, the way they kind of spun the baseball early on, but just the, the length, the fact that everyone's going five or six and – and putting up zeros like Pavetta. Yeah, listen, if it was any other team, he probably would have given up a couple. There's no question about it. But uh, still, one run. He threw the ball great, you know, opening series there against Seattle. Like, Bale's the one guy. But you could look at him. I thought his stuff was so much better. He's given up three two-run homers. That's it. You know, so, but the whole rotation, Crawford, Hauk, Whitlock, like, the fact that they're giving you five or six, given what we saw last year, I think is a big surprise. We knew the bullpen was going to be deep, and they are. But the rotation, putting up zeros, giving you length, that, that's been a beautiful thing to see. i tell you what else, not for nothing, but I love the day game. I, 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 don't, I, know, I don't know why they don't do more of them, but I love, you know, when the game's over, like, at 536. I think this last game they had it literally ended right around 6. Yeah. Um, it's just such a change-up, uh, and I hate the late-night game. But the, uh, one of the things that you mentioned in your uh, uh, walking and talking yeah, yeah, yeah. Is uh, Devers? You feel like yeah. Devers isn't right? Like, what have you no. seen that you believe like that he's off a little bit? Well, I'd say for like the whole month of spring training, you know, he was making good swing decisions, driving the ball the other way. Everything was the other way, the left center fastballs away the other way, and then we saw that opening day again with the home run the other way, and and he was just so locked in 
you know, swinging decisions and, and not chasing as much and hitting the ball the other way. Then he, you know, the shoulder acted up on him. He missed two days. He looked okay in Seattle that last day after having two days off. But when we got to Oakland, it was, he just looked like a different hitter, completely different hitter. Like, and they were fastballs away and he's rolling over to second, fastballs away and he's rolling over to the pitcher. And I don't know if it's the shoulder or not, but I do know if your shoulders are hurting or something's hurting in your body, you feel like you got to cheat. And when you feel like you have to cheat and get it going earlier, you swing at more pitches, and you don't hit the ball where it's pitched like he was before. And and I just – he looked like a different guy. Now, I, I don't know, maybe hopefully the day off helps him out in Anaheim, but it looked to me like the shoulder was bothering him and he was cheating, and it just wasn't the same. I expect Lou um, Seden Raffaella yeah. to take a while – before we really start to see him, I think, hit consistently at the big league level, I've kind of told myself or at least convinced myself that that's going to be a process. Number one, am I talking to myself the right way? And then number two, is he already a an above average center fielder at the big league level? Yeah, he is. And he's already kind of in like top five gold glove caliber type center fielders, you know, and in, in maybe even just top three finalists defensively. Um, and I, he looks a lot more comfortable. Like the, the ease in which he goes and gets balls, a couple of those plays he made, he almost made an amazing one before that too, uh, is just different level. And we saw it with Jackie Bradley. And if you're going to compare it with Jackie Bradley, that's a pretty high level. And I think he's actually like foot speed faster. Um, offensively, you know, it's he's, he's in the spot. It's a weird spot. It's like, and I think Cora mentioned it the other day. We could have started him down in AAA and have him hit 320 again because he does 310 at every level. And then in two months, bring him up and still have to go through these adjustments at the big league level. So why wait? You know, let's have him start trying to see big league hitting every day, make his adjustments week to week, month to month, all while saving us runs and games in center field. And I think you could realistically say he saved you two games out in Oakland because he was in center. So it's going to be a work in progress. I don't know if he's ever going to be a great hitter. Uh, you know, he's, he's hit everywhere he's gone. So it's just one of those, hopefully he just gets better every single month. And the finished product is offensively is still like a year or two down the road. Yeah, and Lou, and not that it even matters as far as wins and losses, but as far as general interest uh, as from fans with this team, the one thing I took out of this last road trip against these two teams was, man, it, it – Feels like they got some personality. They got some yeah. interesting players on the team that I think, even if they're scuffling or struggling, you'd be willing to go see. Like Duran and his ability, Casas and his ability, Rafaela in center field. It just feels like they're starting to, you know, build some, I don't know, uh, just personality that instead of a, a sale day, which you don't have, it's the others that are kind of contributing to the interest. Yeah, it's youth. You know what I mean? An enthusiasm. You know, I don't think an older club is going to be dancing. You look at, you know, in the dugout before a game, yeah. you look at the kids and they're it's all kids, you know, and there's athleticism. So there's, you know, defense. It's always, listen, it's awful to watch a game, like the game one against Oakland, you know, where they just made five errors in the first three innings. You're like, it's just awful baseball. I want to turn it off. You know, and so if you're out there catching the baseball, making some athletic plays and getting on base and, Taking the extra base, stealing bags. It's just a more exciting kind of style of, of baseball, right? So hopefully they keep continue that. But you also need the thump. You know, the bats got to get going. You know, they're five and two, and the bats really haven't gotten going at all. Uh, Lou, the bullpen has been great. Yeah. But for perspective, how bad is Oakland? Are we Oakland. looking at – can they win 60 this year? No. No, I don't think they can. I mean, I don't – they've got some big leaguers, you know, some guys like J.D. Davis, you know, it's pretty good. And Bladé looks like he's finally learning how to swing it. Their closer to kid Mason Miller is a phenom. But, um, no, and, and I tell you, the, the put it in perspective thing, like I, I always have a hard time because, like, Pavetta looks so much better against Seattle than he did against Oakland, and it was a worse lineup. So it still comes down to individual execution. You know what I mean? So you, if you don't throw the ball well and leave it over the middle of the plate, someone's going to hit you. Like, I don't really care what – whether it's Oakland or or the Rangers or the Yankees or the Astros, like you're going to get hit. And he wasn't very sharp. He got away with it, you know, put up a zero because it was Oakland. But um, their arms are just really good in the pen, you know, and hopefully Kenley can kind of figure this thing out velocity-wise. Walk, He hasn't given up a hit, but he's walked five guys in three innings. So you got to get him going a little bit. 
So um, not to rub salt in a, in a wound that I don't even know is even healed yet. Okay. But I saw Alex Spear wrote this article in the Globe the other day about Mookie Betts and just all his yeah. numbers are nuts, right? And, mm -hmm. and he's playing shortstop at 31, and he's, quote, like, I'm not a normal person. I can't help but look at that situation and just regret the idea uh, that he was allowed to leave town. Yeah. It's like, you know, it's really kind of short-sighted. The whole thing of like, um, you know, our, our look at our contract, look at our minor leagues, look at this, look at that. It's like, okay, well, you know, if you're going to Im improve on all, right, and improve your minor league system and see a lot of youth in the big leagues, couldn't you sort of withstand like a year or two of rebuild and then when you come on the other side of it, you still got Mookie Betts, right? Like it's sort of, it's almost like, you know, it's like Brady. <laughs> you know, it's sort of like, yeah, the next year or two gear could be tough and we got to retool it, but then after that, we still got him for another two or three years when hopefully we get where we want to be. But um, it's, it is. It's frustrating watching him. And basically right now what you got left is, you know, Connor Wong and then the guys you got for the Verdugo trade. So that's a, that's still a tough one to swallow when you're watching him do what he does. Is, is, a, is, is a Mookie Betts uh, the Red Sox modern-day Babe Ruth? Yeah, I hope not, because I hope it's not 86 <laughs> years or 82 years or three years, whatever the hell's left. Feels but, like it, though. Yeah, it's it's not it's not fun, you know, because he's just such an elite talent. And now he's playing second, and then now he's playing short, and he's just moving all over the field. Lou, uh, when uh, you look at what's going on in Oakland, mm. in New York with the Mets, fans checked out on them a year after they spent, what, $300 million or whatever it was. The fans have kind of bailed on them a little bit. Um, I know those situations are different, but they're similar because there's a little bit of fan revolt. How do you see both of those sort of situations? Well, it's just different because I look at the Mets as like just dumb decisions, you know, because their payroll is still through the roof. And it's like you're still spending $250 million and you're in a rebuild. You feel like the A's. Meanwhile, the A's have, have payrolls over a little over $40 million. And they get revenue sharing. And they're not putting it into the club. They're not going to put it in the club for the next three years until they get to Vegas. Like, so this is the product that people in Sacramento next year will get. They'll just be happy to have baseball and watch other big leaguers come to town. But this is who this team is going to be for the next three or four years. And that is like a problem like to me. Like that's, and then we get into the whole, should there be a floor? If there's a floor, there's, there's going to be, you know, a salary cap and, and they're going to fight that tooth and nail. But, yeah, you know, when you get this revenue sharing money, if you're a forty million dollar payroll and you're getting twenty million, now you should have a sixty million dollar payroll. You know, and they just don't they just don't do it. Lou, did you ever play a minor league game in uh Sacra Tomato? I did. My last year playing was in Sacktown. Oh seven, my last year in Pro Ball before I retired. How terrible a city is it? Is it a bad place hey, to be? It's the state capital. Yeah, no, it uh, you know, minor for a minor league city, I thought it was great. You know, I didn't mind it one bit. I mean, there were days when it might have been really hot, you know, but um, 100 degrees, 105 degrees out there. But um, the city's okay. You know, as far as a big league city goes, yeah, it doesn't measure up at all. Yeah, the um, I saw the other day that when they were comparing the two stadiums that uh, the Sacramento team had more fans than the actual A's team. Yeah, and they will because they you know they still like baseball. I know the product's going to be awful, but they're going to see big leaguers. Like, like they, they keep announcing like six grand, you know, at these A's games. And I'm telling you, there wasn't more than 2,500 people. Oh! Oh, oh really? then we need a because Thank you, Lou, because uh, I had a wager, of course, with lost. Christian, right? Where I said, will they crest 10,000 people no. over three games? Three no. games. And they didn't, but they announced like 6,600, 50, whatever, 100, and then I don't even know what the day game was. Yeah, no, they probably announced 15,000, right, for probably three games. And there's no freaking chance there was 10. <laughs> uh, so no I No chance. No, no, you're not going to be so I, I win. Uh, Lou was there. Yeah. It. Christian, I counted Lou. them. I counted them. Yeah, exactly. See, this is how it, this is what hey, it turns he's on he's me. corporate this, Lou. There it is. Because corporate Lou, we know the, the exact number in the sure. A's, so that it looks better. Yeah. On me. This, exactly. this backfired. That's right. This backfired. I'm now 13 to 1. <laughs> Yeah, they're, honestly, uh, there wasn't 10,000. Oh, there was man. 3,300 a game. There was no chance. No chance. I, I was I was with you. They they went to the first game, and Jemai Webster's there, and they're, like, shown in the background, and you could see a drink and a hot dog guy walking around. That was it. It was awful. It Sad. was pretty bad. Well, you're, uh, you're back east. You got opening day right around the corner. The oh, Fenway yeah. Experience. Yeah, yeah, a little weekend off. <laughs> Lou's part out. of the Fenway Experience. Lou is yep. a part of the Fenway Come Experience. Come meet Lou Maloney. They're going to put me down at the gate, and I'm going to meet and greet. Yeah. <laughs>
in your uniform <laughs> with the crappy uniforms that they're wearing now, not the good ones oh, that you wore. Can, can you just hook us up with a parking spot? That's, That's all, all we need, need for That's Tuesday. That's all we want. That's <laughs> all I wanted the parking spot. Oh, you guys coming down? Yeah, uh, we'll be there. Yeah. Oh. You may need to you need to come on down and hang out a little bit. If you, oh, that's going to be too early for you. Oh, no, no, it, no, no, oh no, you'll no, be there. No, I'll probably get there oh, around in studio 10, visit. It's opening day. I might just actually sleep there Monday night. Get excited. This is like your happy place, right? Well, it is my it, happy place. It, well, it also saves 60 bucks in parking. So, I mean, <laughs> sleeping there is cheaper. Hey, Lou, thanks, buddy. We appreciate it. Glad you're back. We'll see you soon. Thank Have you. Have a great Thank weekend. You, I'll see you guys Tuesday. There we go. Our guy, Lou Merloni, non-corporate Lou Merloni, with us on the Harbor One hotline. Of course, uh, Fourier's got to uh, poke at Lou. Yeah, he got back at me. I do want to, yeah, they're, technically you should be purchasing pizza again. No, no, no. Technically, you're on, you have two weeks in a row that you owe based on this bet. Whoa, that you what's lost. the other one? You doubled down on the 10000 And then I gave you another chance. I said, hey, with this one crest uh, over 4500 you said, uh, no, and then they announced like 5000 it was over or something. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, who are we going to go by? Lou? Yeah. Nah. See? It, it, you're just trying to get a free week of pizza. Is really what it is. You, you, you lost I all the play by the rules. I should have. I I didn't think they would cook the books that bad out there.